And my challenge, I guess, and my encouragement in this course, and one of the 10 keys that I give is this permission thing of give yourself permission to be okay. In fact, more than that, who have you given the permission to to be not okay? Yeah. Is it your family? Is it your friends, your culture, your religion? What, your, your environment? What, who have you given your permission to to remain stuck forever? Yeah. I'm really challenging that thought of, you know what, actually you're the only one who can give yourself permission. Yeah. Or permission away. You're right. So what are you going to do? And that's what, you're, that's what you did. Yeah. You went, you know what? I'm going to give myself permission here to yeah. use this experience to change the world. Actually, that's what you're about to do. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. <laughs> totally. And with the power of technology, as much as you and I get annoyed with it. Yeah, that's another grief. <laughs> with the power of technology right now, this interview can go to all over the world. Yeah. People on Facebook can share it. They yeah. can like it. They can forward it in emails or whatever they do. And all of a sudden... Vicky and Steve, just these everyday people in Australia, are all over the world telling people, hey, it's okay for you to choose life. Yeah. yeah. To, you know, choose this. There's a scripture that, that, that I, I've loved, and it says, it says, choose this day, life or death. That and is really cool. That's a great statement. Yeah. What yeah. I, and I've looked at that in every area. You know, this choose this day. Am I going to get and go for a walk and look at my health? Mm. Am I going to look at my marriage and my relationship with my kids? You know, what am I doing to better myself? What am I doing with the pain that I'm not understanding? Who's helping me? What support have I got? Because today I want to choose life. Mm. I want to choose life. Mm. Not because I've diminished the pain of grief, not for a moment, mm. but because I honour people. Yeah. Love people. Um, for me, my one thing, you know, I read this book called One Thing, it's fabulous. Um, the one thing and it challenges you what are you here for what's your one thing you know, if you could break down vicky mcclifty into my one thing and of course it changes i think as you go through life yeah, yeah. Well, i brought mine down to my one thing is to bring hope to people yeah that's what well, i want very similar <laughs> yeah i just want to bring hope to people yeah that, that you can be okay yeah. Not because we've diminished anything in fact quite the opposite yeah we're it and we're acknowledging it and we're allowing ourselves to have horrible days and days you scream and yell. And, and uh, I've just been writing the outline of a book and I'm thinking I'm going to call it, I hate you, God, cross it out, I love you. Yeah. When you uh, meet up with people that have just, I mean, obviously with doing funerals and, yeah. and you, you sit with people and you talk to them or, or you're with someone in the hospital who's dying um, and their family's there, what do you give? What sort of encouragement of that do you say to them? Yeah, um, I'll, I'll often try to um, facilitate really positive discussion. Yeah. Wonderful memories and moments and mm. things like that. I, I talk about um, and teach about the three H's in, in what I call acute grief. So I walk into a home usually within 24 hours or 48 hours of somebody passing away yeah. and often completely unexpectedly. Yeah. So they've never met me. I've never met them. And here I am in their living room, sometimes with a dozen people, Oh. You know, many of them crying, some wailing, some walking out. I talk about the three things to help your friends as well. And it's simply this. First one is hang around, just be there. Yeah. Just be available to people. Um, don't be in the way, mm. but be available. Mm. The second one um, I call hug. Now, if they're a huggy person, then, yeah, give them a hug. But what I really mean by that is are you, be prepared to step into someone's world that's in pain. Mm. Don't stand. Don't be removed. Yeah. Actually, step in. Yeah. And then the third one is hush. <laughs> Just be quiet. Like, what are you going to say that's going to change it? But, you know, Vicky, the issue here goes further, as you and I both know. Yeah. You more than me losing a child. Uh, after the funeral, everyone goes home. They go back to school. They go back to work. Yeah. Life for them just continues on and you're left. What? Yeah. What, what happens now? Yeah, and that's that's probably something that people need to be made aware of that have friends or family that are grieving is that their grief doesn't go away and that, you know, that they're constant. Uh, well, you know, just being there for them is, is key. I certainly, you know, with friends and family for me that have lost someone, I make a point of every week sending an inbox or a... You know, we've got technology now that makes it so easy. Yeah. Hey, Vicky, just thinking of you today. If you need anything, just yell out. 
Now, I don't say that in the first few weeks because no one's going to yell out because they don't know how to ask for help. They yeah. don't know how can ask for help. They don't have the energy to ask for help. So mm -hmm. I'm more, hey, Vicky, just let you know I'm dropping around some food. Yeah. More than, because we do know, but we say to people, oh, if you need anything, let me know. Well, ask yourself that question. How many people do you ring up? <laughs> That's right. It's such a hard thing to do, to ask for help. So I just say to people, don't do that. Just, just assume that they need your help. Yeah. Don't get in the way. Mm. So, but just send, and then I just back it off. You know, once a month, I'll give them a phone call, an inbox, a text, and say, hey, still thinking of you. Yeah. And it's amazing the appreciation that comes back. Yeah. And again, it's normally going, you know what, Steve, you're one of two or three people that have kept in contact. Mm. out of so many i think too um with the mother who's got other children and that was something that i like to remind people too is that I, and it could be why for two years it took me a while to get through but you're looking after those other children that you have as well so it's not a case of you grieving on your own it's a it's a case of watching your children go through the pain and everything of what's involved with grief and you trying to be strong for them. Yeah. So it's, it's a tough process when you, you know, I mean, and then you, there's your husband and then what happens with the, that relationship? There's so much that's involved when you lose a child. And I know the statistics are really very, very poor with regards to um, couples staying together oh. after the loss of a child. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, totally. yeah. And, and loss in general. Yeah, a loss. A lot of marriages won't won't survive the journey, and it's, yeah. it's which of course then adds another grief. Yeah, it does. It it's just another layer. It's a different layer. Yeah, it's another layer. Yeah, and then that breakdown adds so many more layers, yeah. and and it's just horrible. And yeah, yeah, I guess that's why things like, um, you know, healing myself TV. It's it, it's why it has to happen. Yeah. Yeah, because if, if people have awareness of the grief and what you can do to um, get through the grief and, man, keep the communication lines open with whoever is in the family and talk about it yeah. because if you don't talk... And we, talk, we spent many, many hours after dinner talking, our family. Like, to me, it was, it was so important to sit down and just be there for everyone. Right. Um, it, you know, communication. And the same with my husband. I mean, he was going through a lot of pain himself, as was I. And, you know, I think our friendship got stronger, actually, because of that. Yeah. Um, but it was still really different for him because being a male and, like, we're all different. Um, and he was very quiet about it. He's, he's always a quiet person, but being quiet about his grief was the, his way of dealing with it. Um, whereas I was very open and wanted yeah. to talk about it. And I had many, well, not many, I had one friend in particular that I used to go and have a coffee with and I would just cry wherever I was. <laughs> and I think it got to the stage where she thought, is she going to cry this time? <laughs> She was really cool and, okay, and we were cool. able, you know, I had someone who I could rely on and, and she didn't really care about what anyone thought, which is really cool. But, yeah. I, guess, I guess the um, message I would like to give to people is, um, is there is hope. Yeah. There really is. And, um, and we won't for one, minute diminish, one moment diminish your pain no. and the incredible loss. We won't for one moment tell you, you've got to be better, got to do this, got to do that, you know. For some, it's, a, it's, it's months. For others, it's years and years and years. And, and, and that's all okay. Yeah. It's but we don't so want to tell people that they can never move on. No. Not on, but forward. They, they can move forward. Yeah, it's different. It is. They can move forward. And they can live an incredibly great life. Yeah. Um, and yeah. so we want to help and encourage people to do that. Your course that you're doing? Yes, it's called I Unstuck. Okay. And um, it's uh, nine, nine proven keys to get unstuck from paralyzing grief. And, um, and it's things like, you know, you talked about gratefulness earlier. Key number one for me is thankfulness. Yes. Asking yourself to be thankful. I talk about journaling, writing things down, remembering, um, walking, exercise, being outside, breathing, being intentional about wanting to get better. Yep. Not going to just happen. Mm. I talk about giving yourself permission to be better. And yeah. it's not in any way devaluing 
your love for your um, loved one. Mm. Uh, a tough one I talk about is about repositioning your loved one. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, it is different now. Mm. So how are you going to remember? How are they positioned? Yeah. Um, are you going to do it in a way that's going to energise you, not drain you? So that's a big topic. Mm. I talk about boundaries, the need for boundaries around your life, with yourself, with others, with family, with relationships. Um, we talk about time and the importance of that. I talk about peace. I talk about the importance of just finding that place where you can feel peaceful and at peace. And whether that's meditation or prayer or chanting or music or singing or reading, or, I, don't, I don't know, but just getting that place where you know, do you know what I mean, Vicky? That just that sense of peace that comes onto your life. That's so and, then, and that's the nine of them. And then the 10th one, um, I talk about others. Mm. And, and that idea of getting our focus onto others as well. You know, what, what gift can we offer? Yeah, that's key. Yeah, I think um, that's something that I really found was by by uh, when I discovered that opening up about my grief and sharing it with others and being able to help others actually helped me. Totally. Yeah. Totally. And I hear that all the time. That was the 10th one I wanted to add was yeah. <laughs> all about you. Yeah. But I want to challenge and encourage you that there's incredible healing in focusing on others, mm. even in the midst of your own pain. Yeah, because you don't own. feel alone. Yeah. Yeah, you, you feel like you're sharing and, and lightening the burden somehow, but also um, you're creating a community because people who suffer grief, all they've all been there, all done that, and they all have that common bond with each other. So if they're um, letting people know that they're going through grief, I think, and being open about it, and it, it allows them, it allows the other person to be open as well. Totally. And, you know, in that dialogue and communication one with the other, it can just be one statement or line that can set you free. Yeah. And change things. I remember I was sitting with a, 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 an old minister friend that I've known forever and he's in his 70s and just a wise old owl. <laughs> I was chatting about, in fact, I was in tears and I was in incredible pain about my life and what was going on. And he made a statement that I've just thought over and over and over. He just said, Steve, if there's a first day, there'll be a last day. And I went, wow. He says, I want you to think about it. Mm. If there was a first day, there'll be a last day. But we never think of the fact there'll be a last day. Yeah. We start a job and we're excited and we've got a first day. Yeah. We never think about we're going to leave one day. Yeah. Or uh, retire or, you know, we've got a first day. You know, I love the fact this morning I went and woke up my daughters ready for school. But there'll be a day when they're not here. Yeah. That's right. And that's... That's another show too, the, uh, parent, the parents whose kids leave home. Totally. So there's this whole... So for me, that was just one statement. Yeah. When I was interacting with someone else. Mm. It really helped me stop and look at why am I so devastated that a last day came mm. when there was a first day and of course it's going to come. Yeah. Well, I wanted it in 20 years' time, but actually it's here now. How am I going to handle that? How am I going to learn to live well anyway? Yeah, well, so, uh, there you go. One door shuts, another door opens. You know, there's always new beginnings in our life and then there will be an end, but then that's a new beginning for something different. Yeah, totally. Uh, absolutely. And, uh, you know, there's a line that says, um, you know, everybody wants to go to heaven, but no one wants to die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's right. And I don't want to. I want to be here forever too. Oh, I'm not wanting to go anywhere. Yeah. I love the idea of heaven and all that it may be worth. But you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I oh know. Well, I think that um, it's been really uh, insightful speaking with you today, Steve. It's uh, mm -hmm. no, it's really cool, and and thank you so much for sharing everything uh, with me and and with our viewers. And hopefully, um, they'll get a lot from this interview today. Uh, cool. Appreciate the time and I just value what you're doing. Oh, and, <laughs> uh, I think the world is thankful. Thanks, Steve.